G'day Ziggy D here. It's about 10.30 a.m. on Tuesday morning here in Australia and I'm just preparing for my first ever solo cutthroat event. Uh, actually, it's the first ever solo cutthroat event. Uh, all previous ones before this were uh, set up to be hardcore and allowed partying. So you sort of have these roaming death squads and things like that. So Chris sort of wants to try this uh, solo cutthroat event and see how this works and I'm, I'm pretty excited. I think this uh, could be a lot of fun. So I've been, uh, I've been preparing for this a little bit. So uh, just in this first uh, section here, in the half an hour leading up to the actual event itself, I'm going to be just going over the rules a little bit, uh, planning out my my build for the for the hour event. Uh, since since you only have an hour to work with, you sort of have this really condensed build, which I actually find it really fun planning builds uh, in a really condensed manner like that. So that should be fun. Uh, hopefully, if you guys are still struggling with the whole planning a build sort of thing, maybe this will help a little bit. Or if you're going to do some cutthroat events or others smaller events in the future yourself then this might help you out as well so first off we'll just I'll just go over some of the major rules uh, the idea of cutthroat is that it's uh, you still have your instances and everything like that but instances instances are completely open and can be invaded by any other players and there's also global PvP so uh, it's it, it's basically free for all there's no partying in this particular uh, solo style of the cutthroat event so that means uh, even if you do want to help someone else out like a friend, uh, friendly fire is enabled, so you have to watch out you're not hitting each other with AoEs and things like that. So when you die, you drop uh, your, your equipment, anything that you have equipped, uh, and 30% of your current level's experience, which goes to the killer as well. So there's a fair uh, gear and experience. There's a pretty good incentive for other people to go you know, hunt you down, so <laughs> that's a lot of fun. So you've got to sort of level, uh, balance leveling, defending yourself, and hunting down other players if you want to be successful. There's no actual prizes for this one or anything like that. Often uh, grinding gear will do prizes and things like that for their events, but this one's just more for fun and to test it out. So uh, other notable things are there's uh, increased player caps, so in any instance there can be, I think it, uh, 12 players here, a maximum of 12 players, so uh, the, the maximum party size is 6, so when you have party cutthroats, that means you can have two parties battling it out. But in solo like this, we should see some pretty uh, packed maps of people just sort of in free-for-all combat. So I think that's it for the major rules. There's a lot of other smaller rules here, but you can go check these out. I'll put links to this sort of thing. Uh, in the description. By the time you see this video, the event will be over, so the link will be outdated, but they often will keep running like this. I think Chris has at least said that they want to do another one of these, uh, slightly modified based on today's feedback next week. So if you don't catch this one, uh, be sure to catch that one. I know a few other people are planning this as well, including Kruparian, so it could be fun to sort of hunt these uh, notable peoples down. So uh, when you're planning a build, often I'll like advocate looking at the theme and uh, your keystones and things like that first, but uh, since this is so condensed into one hour, the quest rewards in terms of skills are actually really important. Now, I think uh, in my testing, I've decided that I'm not going to be going for Brutus, Brutus at all. The rewards are just not enough. I'm going to be playing a Shadow. So here, here we have my uh, rewards for the Shadow. We start off with a double strike. That's not going to be so important. I'm going to be going for Freezing Pulse. Uh, phase run, because phase run is pretty essential for any sort of PvP situation, and cold snap, just for a sort of like a longer range uh, freeze. Ice spear could also be good, but I, I don't have any experience with ice spear, so I'm going to stick with cold snap for today. So freezing freezing pulse, uh, phase run, and cold snap. I'm going to be skipping the medicine chest until I have the cold snap, and then I'll go back and get the medicine chest, just because um, I don't really want to die on hail rake, he's, and he's quite tough. So let's go have a look at the passive tree. Now, in one hour, you only really have, well... I see uh, people in hardcore races doing like, you know, 15 levels or 15, 20 levels in, in the one hour, but I think with PvP stealing my experience and also me not being a uh, very experienced racer, uh, I think around 10 to 12 levels is probably the good point to plan for, and I'll just have an idea of what I could do after if I somehow managed to make it further than that. So since we're going with these cold spells, I'm going to be starting off with the spell damage, going up through here, cast speed, important, so I can get off those freezes as quickly as possible. Uh, my main idea is to be freezing other players as much as possible. So, mental acuity here, uh, increased critical strike chance means more freezes, and I'm also getting extra intelligence for that extra mana. So I've got 42 there now. Uh, I'll be going through to cold damage here and getting freeze, and that is as far as I'll be going in this line, and from that point onwards, I'll be going down and getting these healths here. Uh, by the time I get this, there's 20 into maximum life and 12% here. This 
Uh, at this point in the game, that 12% and 20 to maximum life ends up being about the same, depending on the items you have equipped. So the order I get those in doesn't really matter. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, I think 11 is a pretty solid amount to go for. And if I happen to get any other levels, uh, I think the best route to go for is more cold damage here. Uh, spell power, the critical strike multiplier is actually really not helpful at this point in the game, but uh, if I am getting more levels I can go through and get more critical strike chance and then assassination here which is more critical strike chance again so uh, that's all just going to help with freezes but really they're, they're only minor, this is the main goal here to try and get to around the level 11 as quickly as possible so that's about it, I've got this shadow planned out go through, so let's just go over, I'll kill Hillock as fast as I can pick up Freezing Pulse, uh, head out and grab, go to the Glyph Wall, skip over as many mobs as I can, try and, you know, avoid other players until I can get Cold Snap, and then go back and get Phase Run. Uh, power Break will be a bit of a challenge, but we'll see how we go. Uh, and then I'll probably head to the ledge and do most of my farming and battling there. So, should be fun. I don't fully know what to expect, because the, uh, the unknown element of all of this is the actual... Uh, the other players and what they do and <laughs> how aggressive they are and things like that. So, it should be interesting. Well, I'll be waiting around. I'll see you on the other side.